What's up everybody? I'm Tyler Larson from Morflate NorCal 4x4 Rescue Snail Trail 4x4 and we're here today with Rubicon Trail Foundation to talk about snow wheeling out here near the Rubicon. Uh, there's a multi-part series that we're going to be going over, a lot of topics to cover. This series here is about recovery equipment. If you want to check out something about camping equipment, uh, vehicle equipment, tips and tricks, go check out one of our other videos over at the YouTube channel. This one, recovery equipment, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. I'm John Arns. I'm here with Tyler today. We're going to talk about some of the recovery equipment that Tyler and I carry in our rigs. So we're going to start at the back and get out the stuff and we'll chat about it. Cool. Okay. What's first, Tyler? Man, I, the number one thing that I'm always a big proponent of, I always tell people if they're going snow wheeling, you have to take a shovel with you. Number one item. Because yeah. you're going to get stuck. You're going to be shoveling something eventually. Um, so there's a lot of different types. The one thing I always tell people not to bring for shovels are those little camping fold-up shovels. They just don't move a lot of snow. They're really hard. You can't get leverage on them to get snow out, say, stuck underneath your frame, underneath your axles. Um, I'm a big fan of avalanche shovels. I'm a big fan of avalanche shovels too. Hey, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about these guys is they're, they're light. They don't weigh a lot. They're short. They cut snow really well. They come apart, as Tyler's showing you. You don't have gloves on. <laughs> like that, so you can make them longer. This one has a little pick on its head. Oh, that's nice. And it even has a fancy compass. Ooh, you're fancy, man. Actually, what it really has that's cool is a saw. <laughs> and that, believe it or not, that, I mean, I carry a chainsaw, but this is useful. Yeah. So that's the first one. The nice thing about avalanche shovels, and especially these ones, we're talking about they're collapsible. You can make them and get long leverage, but then they pack down really small and they don't take up a lot of weight. So they're not taking up a lot of space in your rig. They're not taking up a lot of weight in your rig either, which helps keep you lightweight, which we'll get into on another series here in the snow wheeling episodes. Next thing I like to tell people is if you're going out with friends and buddies, um, eventually someone's going to get stuck. It's going to happen. Bring a strap with you. And not just a strap, but bring a kinetic strap. And there's differences between static straps and kinetic straps. Um, John, do you want to explain the difference, the different usage sure, scenarios of them? Sure, let's talk about it. This is a kinetic strap. This is a kinetic strap. Kinetic straps have elasticity to them. Dy uh, static straps do not. So kinetic, dynamic, or interchangeable words. Static means sitting still. So a, st a static strap, when you pull on it, will, if it's a 20 foot strap, will pull out to about 20, 20 feet, feet, roughly. <laughs> a kinetic strap will go to 20 feet, and then usually about 10% or 20% more of that will stretch. It'll stretch out, and then the the opposite reaction to that is pulling on that rig really hard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this will this this thirty foot kinetic strap will go to about thirty six feet mm -hmm. before it snaps back to thirty and pulls on that rig really hard. Mm -hmm. So, a kinetic strap is particularly important in snow and also in sand, but snow is what we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah. The big thing that um, I like to kind of tell people about is if you're pulling on somebody with a static strap that doesn't stretch is a lot of times when somebody gets stuck, they're gonna be in these four holes where their tires are. Their frame's gonna be stuck, axles are gonna be stuck, something like that. And when you pull on that static strap, it's an immediate stop. And it's enough to kind of get them up out of the hole and then come back down. Agreed. <laughs> Whereas with uh, kinetic straps and dynamic straps, when you pull and get that initial yank on the person, it's gonna pull them up out of the hole. And then that elasticity is gonna continue the pull forward and really get them out of the danger the spot of rolling back into those holes it also makes yanking on people a lot easier on your recovery points bumpers your frame um, any kind of stress you yourself your neck <laughs> your yeah. neck and your kidneys so that's so. so that's important when you're uh when you're pulling somebody a long distance too and another thing that's important if you notice there's two of them here why do i carry two 30 foot 20 foot sometimes you want a long strap sometimes you want a short strap sometimes if you're doing something technical you want to Take it in half seal. This is only a 10 foot strap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Different lengths are good to have. 
Yeah. Different lengths, different types of straps, different scenarios you want to use them. You're coming up into the snow. We as people, humans, don't survive very well in the snow, so um, have different resources available for different kinds of situations. Exactly. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about um, connecting to vehicles. So there's a couple yeah. there's a couple of things we have have here for connecting to vehicles. This one or or connecting to objects. This is mm -hmm. good to put. A, this is uh, this is 14 feet. It's feet. It's it's um, static. It's good to put around a tree or a rock or another vehicle or a tire. This one is for a rollover. Is really good for. Doing, putting around a cage, doing cage or recovery, like that. doing cage recovery, yeah. exactly. It's because it's short, has mm -hmm. loops at either end. Um, and while we're at it, let's talk about strength. When you talk about strength, you want to talk about working load, and you want to talk about, um, and you want to talk about max about max load. So this right on it says 22,500 pounds of straight load and 43,000 pounds of basket load. So straight load would be like this. Basket load is like this, with these two hooked together. Have rated equipment with rated assemblies. If you start messing around with unrated assemblies, it's a matter of time before something breaks and flies through the air or breaks at the wrong time and somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are, these are really clever. I hadn't seen these before today. Um, I really like this option as a tree strap. I know a lot of other people will use you know, a three or four inch wide strap that has a high rating and it essentially creates anchor points. I really like these options because it has the two loops on the end. It's a nice compact thing compared to a tree strap packaging. Um, another option for kind of connecting things together is infinity loops, um, which now that I've seen these, I like these a lot better, but <laughs> just another option out there for people. Infinity loops are great to wrap around a cage, wrap around a slider, wrap around a wheel. And then say you've got your wheel object here, you can wrap around and then put your connecting points here. So the advantage of this is it's really quick and easy. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage is it doesn't have ends to it. So yep. if you wanted to put this through say two holes in your wheel, yep. you could, this would be a lot harder. It's a lot harder to do, I've, yep. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's talk about shackles. Yeah. Shackles, are devices, shackles are devices to interconnect interconnect recovery gear. Mm -hmm. This is a traditional shackle. We've all seen them hanging in loops in the back of your rig. My rule for these is never put them in the air. And the reason is if, when you start putting steel in the air, if something breaks, it's gonna fly at you and you're putting yourself in a dangerous position. Or other people. Or other people. Mm -hmm. So these are great for anchoring to a rig. By the way, when you anchor them to a rig, if you leave them on your rig, put a wire tie through the middle of them so you don't lose them. I've yep. got, I, most of mine are free. I find them on the trail. <laughs> when you put them in your rig, people have a habit of putting them in and tightening them all the way down. If you tighten them all the way down, this will probably end up on a B-roll. You tighten them all the way down, they'll bind. But if you tighten them down and back them off a quarter turn, they're easy to remove. <laughs> yep. So this is, a, this is a soft shackle. And soft shackles have kind of come about in the last, what, 10 years? 10 years, yeah. Started mm -hmm. to see them. Mm -hmm. Soft shackles are super cool because they're soft. Yes. Because it's if you have a choice, would you really get hit with this or this? I don't know. Hit me. I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll start with this one. <laughs> okay. Obviously, you want to you want to get hit with the soft shackle if you're going to get hit by something. They're really easy to work with. You know what else they don't do in the snow? Hmm freeze yeah they don't freeze yep and those do mm -hmm. and they don't make your hands cold and yeah those do yes <laughs> yeah. so soft shackles are really cool yeah. all right tyler let's talk about snatch blocks awesome one of my favorite pieces of equipment in recovery situations are snatch blocks do you have a snatch block we might be able to get it out oh i have a snatch <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna use this on another website aren't you <laughs> We've got two different kinds here. Um, one is a metal snatch block. You split them apart, put your line in, put them back together, anchor point, line comes out this way. And then there's another one that's come about really in the past like five years. Really called, recently. Yeah, really recently called soft shackle snatch blocks. Um, and they're designed with a lot less weight, a lot safer, 
Um, if, you know, if something breaks in your system, again, you know, comparing soft shackles to metal shackles, um, metal hurts a lot more than soft stuff does. So having less weight in your uh, recovery system and less things that can hurt you is better as long as you maintain the working loads out of it. But these are really cool stuff and you can use them for mainly two different options, two different situations in recovery. One is to redirect your energy, redirect your pull, and the other one So you is, mean you mean redirect the direction of your pull? Correct. Okay, good. Yes, good. redirect the direction of your pull, or you can increase the pulling power of your system, your recovery system. And so that comes into uh, what's called mechanical advantage. We're not going to get into all the math of setting up mechanical advantage, but what is important is that by doing that, you can increase the effective pulling power of your winch, of your vehicle, if you have to use a vehicle to do it, um, whatever you're using to pull. Even a come along. Even come along, come alongs, they're great. Um, high lifts, you can use them with a high lift. There, there's a lot of different ways to create mechanical advantage with these. Um, and the benefit is that it just makes everything work a lot more efficiently. It makes everything work less hard on all your gear. So why is it important to change directions, Tyler? That's a good question. We could be in a situation where, you know, we just don't have a good way to set up a pull. Say John gets stuck in his TJ here, which he does a lot. Not really. <laughs> um, but say he gets stuck and there's no way for me to get around and and get to a location that's safe to pull him out and recover his vehicle. Um, that's where one of these can come in play. I can be off to the side of him somewhere. I can be behind him and running a winch line up to in front of him and then off of a tree to come back down to John's rig to get him out of wherever he's at. Um, so just having one of these immensely, immensely gives you way more options for recovery um, just by using the resources and utilizing different options you have while you're out on the trail. Great example of direction change, Tyler. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can use direction change for pulling a vehicle, for pulling, and it's very useful for pulling uh, a down tree off the trail, for example, yeah. um, where you don't want to drive off into the woods to pull, but you can use a tree that's off in the woods and, and, uh, and use a, a, a block for a direction change and pull that out of the way. Yeah, 100%. And when you're snow wheeling, trees are going to be coming down it happens so let's talk about let's see what are some other equipment here well, let's talk about let's talk about how much how much you carry in terms of length length uh -huh. matters length does matter Size I've, been matters. I've been told differently my whole life uh, <laughs> so in this rig everything here is carried in this rig except for this I believe yeah uh, so there's 30, there's 50, there's 60, there's 70, there's 195, because <laughs> I carry an extra 125 of winch rope, mm -hmm. that if I totally screw up my winch rope up in front, I can put this in. Yep. And there's 200 feet of winch rope up in front. So what do we get to? Almost 400 feet? Yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever had all of that out, but I know I've had 300 feet out. Yep. And sometimes... It's not fun walking 300 feet through, <laughs> through hip deep snow, but if you need to do it, you need to do it. Yeah, you'd rather do that than be stuck there overnight. Right. So yeah, winch extensions, if you're going off-roading in the snow, again, you're gonna get stuck. Maybe the nearest tree is 400 feet away. Um, having winch extensions, super important to have. They don't take up a lot of space for what you, the value you get out of them. Mm -hmm. so. so what is that situation that you've had to use your 300 line feet of line to get out so the perfect rubicon has the perfect example of, of a place that you might on any winter day need to use 300 feet of winch line mm -hmm. and it's the granite bowl getting yeah. from the bottom of the granite bowl to the top of the granite bowl you have when it's icy you have two choices either you have enough or you do it multi you do multiple pulls and yep. sometimes you don't have the multiple pull choice so there's good anchors at the very top you can get out it takes about 280 feet of winch line to get from the bottom <laughs> to the top so how do i know that how do you know that john <laughs> yeah. having to do it before so th yep. so that's super important um let's talk about uh there's two pieces of equipment 
left here. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, load distribution. Load distribution, this is a really neat device that Factor 55 came out with recently, really in the past like two years, and it's called a load distribution plate. And what's really cool about it is that you can set it up off of an anchor point, so off of a tree, a really big rock, another vehicle, whatever it is. And then you can hook that up to your anchor point, and then you can hook up your pull, your snatch block, or another pull, whatever you're doing, off of this guy. And what it does, it distributes the load off of the anchor point, rather than, say, if you have one vehicle pulling off the snatch block to another vehicle, most of the time in that situation, one of those vehicles is acting as the anchor point. And if you have a really light vehicle trying to pull a heavy vehicle from getting stuck, that light vehicle is just going to be winching itself in, right? So with a load distribution plate, it acts and helps distribute the load of your winching system so that the anchor point is actually what's taking most of that load and you can have a lighter weight vehicle pulling out a heavier weight vehicle. Pretty cool piece of equipment. Another piece of equipment that I personally carry with me, um, and I carry like two to three of them, is a, a hitch receiver recovery block. And what's really neat about these guys is almost every off-road vehicle out there will have a rear bumper on it that has a hitch receiver. There's some that don't, but most of them do. And you're gonna come into a situation where somebody needs to get recovered and having your recovery points off the sides of your bumper will give you an uneven uh, direction pull when force is applied to them. And there's sometimes you just want to pull that vehicle straight in a line. And the best way to do that is to pull from the center line of the vehicle. And that's where these come in handy. You just hook this right into your receiver hitch, have a soft shackle on it, a hard shackle on it. Um, and then you can pull straight on the center line of the vehicle and it gives you a nice clean pull. It won't pull somebody off into snow berms if you're in the middle of a trail. And is that a rated assembly? Uh, this one is rated. This guy is not rated. So hmm, that's interesting. I've never mm -hmm. seen a soft shackle that isn't rated. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, rated. Yep. Interesting. Um, the other thing, I, the other thing that is cool about this, it's factor 55 again. The other thing that's cool is it's aluminum, so it doesn't weigh a lot. And Tyler mentioned that almost every off-road vehicle has a receiver hitch in it, but not all of them have uh, have connection points for shackles. Mm -hmm. This is by far the best way to connect to a receiver and people who connect to trailer hitches are asking for trouble. 100%. Trailer hitches are designed to carry a load vertically, mm -hmm. which is to say the trailer that they're designed for, which is a rolling load. Uh -huh. They're not designed for static loads. They're not designed for, ver for a horizontal pull. You are putting yourself in a lot of danger if you pull off of them. Yeah, most trailer hitch balls, the 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 big ones that you'll see are rated for about ten thousand pounds. That's it. And when you're pulling on two vehicles, you are. Do you think? Do you think two <laughs> vehicles that weigh four thousand pounds, this one and that one, pulling on each other, are creating more than ten thousand pounds of shock load? I think so. I think every time. <laughs> every single time. Yeah. Yep. So don't pull on trailer hitches. Don't pull on those balls. They will fly off. They do kill people. Um, these are by far the best way to do that. So the last piece of recovery equipment that, uh, th do you have anything else you want to talk about for recovery back here, Tyler? Um, the big thing that I want to talk about is that gets overlooked a lot of times <laughs> are these right here. Yep. Um, we, you know, us as human beings, we depend on our hands and our feet when we're out on the trail. And if we get those banged up, if we get our hand caught or burned on a line, on a strap, something like that, um, it makes life super difficult for us. So have a set of recovery gloves, preferably with leather palms, um, and that will go a long way to making sure your hands stay safe while you're out on the trail. Okay, so here's my glove tip for you today, Tyler. Okay. These gloves uh, look like mechanic gloves, mm -hmm. right? And they have a leather palm like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. If you look on the back, they say Forrester on them. Okay. The reason they say Forrester is they're really chainsaw gloves and they're Kevlar lined. That's cool. So that yeah. means that if you have a sharp object that hits them, it snags in the Kevlar instead of cutting your hand. Yep. So for re for recovery gloves, they're fantastic for multiple reasons. That's a great idea. I do have these with my chainsaws, uh, Kevlar gloves for mm -hmm. chainsawing. I never thought to use them in recovery situations. Though. That's a great tip. There you go. <laughs> uh, the last piece of equipment I think I want to talk about for recovery is the one that everybody thinks about, and that's the winch. My second piece, favorite piece of equipment. 
Let's head around to the front of the vehicle and talk about the winch. So John, we have a pretty cool looking device up here on the front of your vehicle. Tell us about this winch and kind of some parts about it, some of the how to use them, what situations you might want to use them in, all that jazz. Okay, so this uh, is a giggle pen winch. It's, um, in my opinion, one of the better winches out there. It's built on the same engineering principles as a 18274, which is the classic. Another awesome winch. A great 8,000 pound classic recovery winch. What this has that that doesn't is it has a uh, drum width that's um, that can be um, specified. So you'll notice I don't have a steering box up here because my steering doesn't use a steering box. That means I can take advantage of all this space, put a particularly wide drum and carry over 200 feet of rope. That's crazy. So that's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, it also has a um, oversized gearbox. So, uh, and it's oil bath gearbox, not grease. So it never runs out of oil and it never nice. gets kicked up with grease. It has a clutch brake over here, and it has two bow uh, 12, volt, 12 volt motors on it. So it's driven by both motors. Advantage there is double the power. The other advantage there is if you blow a motor. Redundancy? You just you just pull that motor out, and now you have half the pulling power. It only It's a 14,000 pound winch with 180 feet per minute of pull. So it's fast, it has a lot of power, and if you pull one of the motors off, if it breaks, the winch will still work. I have a, I have a plate that you put on to cover it. Okay. The winch will still work at only 7,000 pounds of pulling power. So the same amount of pulling power that most. A winches lot of winches, 8,000 pounds out there, yeah. are pretty are pretty close to that yeah. anyway. So let's talk a little bit about you know winch weight ratings. I don't say weight ratings, uh, pull ratings. Mm -hmm. So you could say in 14,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds. Um, what? How much does somebody really need for their vehicle? What should they be looking at in terms of winches in to my, put on their vehicle? In my opinion, and anybody who snow wheels will off the top of their head tell you how much their vehicle weighs. Because mm -hmm. they know because mm -hmm. weight matters. Yes, it does. So in my opinion, you should have a winch that's at least twice, a winch with a pull rating that's at least twice the weight of your vehicle. Yep. Is that... That's about, yep. I, th I tell most people, you know, enduring, if you, all you do is rock crawling, rock stuff during the summer, one and a half times, you're pretty good, solid. In snow, there's a lot more suction from the, from the, uh, your surfaces. And so two times minimum is what I recommend people in snow wheeling. I would agree. And this is a 4,200 pound vehicle with a 14,000 pound pull rating on the winch. You're good. I'm good. <laughs> so let's talk about winch design for a second. Mm -hmm. This is a gear driven design and uh, it uses gear reduction in an oil bath in this area of the winch over here to create the uh, mechanical advantage to, to turn uh, 1,400 pounds of pull into 14,000 pounds of pull. More torques. More torques. Yeah. Other, there's other kinds of winches. There's worm drive winches like the old classic Ramseys. Okay. Very strong winch. Nothing wrong with that. There's also planetary winches. This has an advantage over a planetary winch because of the oil bath, which always lubricates and cools. Uh, it, it also has an advantage over, um, over the worm drive because there's no power loss in the right-hand drive of the worm. So this is gonna be the most bang for your buck. The next is the worm drive. Planetary winches are fine some of the time for some of the people. But if you are snow wheeling every day, all the time, you're going to burn up your planetaries in short order. Yeah. And they also run grease. They don't, uh, they don't have an oil bath. They have grease yeah. in them. And that means you've got you to ma you you maintain them at least once a year, take them apart and grease yeah. them. Yep. Yeah. I like it. So you've got 200 feet here. Most winches hold 80 to 100 feet mm -hmm. um, typically. Um, what are situations that we might want to use the winch when we're out snow wheeling? Situations that you'd want to use the winch snow wheeling is not more than 20 or 30 times a day. <laughs> and that's why we want a big beefy winch. Uh -huh. We can use it to extract somebody else. Uh -huh. We can use it to extract ourselves. Okay. We can use it to move things, specifically trees that are down in the, in the trail. Yep. What, else, what other things were you thinking of? Those are the, the big ones. Um, you can use them to, 
you know, if you need to let somebody down off of a snowbank, you can drop them off using your winch. You can. <laughs> there's lots of fun uses for winches. You can use them as zip lines if you're bored at lunchtime. Sure. So. Have you ever uh, been down Walker Hill in the ice? You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Oh. I have a once, yes. So That's I, fun. <laughs> so I've been down Walker Hill uh, on my wheels on the ice. Mm -hmm. I've also been down it on my roof on oh. the ice. <laughs> I prefer the wheel version. Yes. So what I've learned about Walker Hill is uh -huh. that if it's icy, you need to turn around above the ice and winch yourself down, down backwards. backwards. That's smart. And that's and that's a good application for a winch right there. Not necessarily for extracting anything. But repelling down repelling, ice. Repelling, literally <laughs> repelling your rig down the down an ice ice sheet. And I've yeah. done it many times there. Yeah, that's a great use for them too. What about any tips or tricks? So everybody is used to plugging a a device into the side of their winch in order to run it. And you'll notice this doesn't even have that available. I did not notice that, but you are correct. There's no way to operate the winch with a wired remote. So, th so the reason it doesn't have a way to operate the winch with a wired remote is because the guy that designed it, Jim Marston, has a, a hard philosophy of not running your winch while you're in front of it if you can possibly avoid it. I'm a huge believer in that. So, yes. so when he sells you the winch, the first thing he says is you're going to have to wire this in. So, so he gives you wiring instructions. It's really simple. It's right here. Mm -hmm. the, um, so inside my vehicle, I have an in-out switch. Okay. So I don't have to find my remote, but I also have this guy that um, that will send the winch in and out. And that's a that's a really really smart thing to have a wireless remote capabilities for your winch because you're right. A lot of times, if you have a wired remote, that means you have to be in the vicinity. You're in the death triangle. In the death triangle of your winch while you're pulling on stuff. That's right. With that. You can get into a safe area. That's right. And this one's made by Lodar, L-O-D-A-R, Lodar.com. Uh -huh. So I don't like the ones that plug into the winch. They, 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 they're vulnerable and they, mm -hmm. and they, um, and they have a short range. I don't like the, um, there's, there's other less expensive ones that don't work as well. This thing will go out 300 feet and still work. Oh, nice. And it also has, a, if you notice when I put it in and out, it has a very short delay a lot of them have a lot of delay you press the button it takes a second for them to come on and you release the button even worse you release the button and they continue to going, run yeah. so this doesn't do that um that, that's my um that's my uh your tip and trick for winches for the day lodar lodar cool yeah. so so tyler tell me about uh about what kind of winch line you run and what you think is is the best thing I personally run synthetic line on my winches. Um, I know that a lot of people run steel cable still, mm -hmm. and there's benefits and drawbacks to both. Agreed. Um, steel cable is going to be way more durable. Agreed. It's gonna it's gonna last longer. You know, if you have to make an angled pull and it ends up scratching on some rocks as you're coming over, or um, digging down into snow, or you don't never always know exactly what's under the snow, right? If you're having to go that route, but if cable, steel cable snaps and breaks, there's a ton of kinetic force built up in that during a winching. And if that breaks and comes back at you, it could kill you. Absolutely. Um, synthetic lines, not quite as durable, um, but plenty strong. They still have a great working load and breaking strength similar to steel cable. But what's um, the huge benefit of these is that they won't kill you when they break. That's correct. They still will come back at you. They'll still snap back. There's still a kinetic force there built up in your winch system, but it's not going to kill you. So I'm always a huge uh, proponent of people running synthetic lines when we're out dealing uh, with our off-roading up in the Rubicon, up in the snow. Um, they're just a lot easier to handle as well. I mean, sitting here like this, we can see this is malleable. Um, it doesn't have steel strands that pop out and poke you as you're and ruin your and <laughs> gloves. ruin your chainsaw gloves that we talked about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a uh, this one a lot easier to use, much much safer, a little less durable, more maintenance. You got to make sure that they're washed out, they're protected from UV sunlight um, as much as possible. Um, well, steel. Let's, let's go back a second. Okay. You wash your winch rope? Yeah. Dirt. If you're if you're doing a lot of dirt and 
sand mud recoveries um, it's nice to get the dirt and the grains out from the fibers of your rope otherwise they will break down those fibers in your rope fairly quickly i asked you that incredulously i wash them religiously oh, you did. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah so the other thing about about washing the rope is come on if you look at this rope this is xd this is master pull xd if you look up by the hook it looks like a regular synthetic winch rope see right yeah. there mm -hmm. that's because inside this jacket it is a regular synthetic win win ah. winch rope. it is a regular synthetic winch rope the advantage of the xd is this jacket this jacket provides no strength whatsoever all it does is keep the winch rope from getting damaged or dirty so that's you're smart. so every time you grab this thing the rating is what it says on the box not what you've worn it down to that's cool i didn't realize that these were an option that's a cool option i may be switching to one of these this is a um this this is another cool thing about this this is a place where this jacket got damaged you can this takes about 10 minutes to to put a repair on this oh cool so if the jacket gets damaged, not to, not to worry, repair it. Nice, no big you, deal. You've got looking in here. Looks like you got quite a few of those repairs there. So this this is uh this is that's nice. Um, people tend to replace their synthetic wimp, winch rope ropes often because they damage so easily. Mm -hmm. This costs twice the money, but this is a six year old winch rope that still, in my opinion, has the same rating it did the day I bought it because I take care of it. That's cool. I do. I replace my winch line pretty much every two years. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a wrap. We got anything else on winches or, or recovery gear? I don't think so. The The other big one for me when it comes to recovery is lights at nighttime and making sure you have, you can see what you're doing. You know, recoveries during the day are awesome. We got plenty of daylight right mm -hmm. out here. It's gorgeous out here. Um, recoveries at night, if you can't see what you're doing, it could be a big safety issue. And we'll talk about lights in another episode on the series here when we get into kind of more the camping equipment side of snow wheeling and snow recreation up here on the rubicon um, i think that about does it i'm really curious to see what other ideas people have when it comes to recovery equipment winches whatever your ideas are leave them in the comments below uh, we love hearing from people and the more ideas more information we have out there the more education we can do and the safer everybody can be while they're snow wheeling so that's all we got for today check out our other videos in this series if you want to learn more about camping equipment more about vehicular equipment more about whatever it is we got the series and the other videos for you i'm tyler i'm john keep wheeling safely everybody